Uh, you have to be really gentle like a butterfly. Wait until the EP motion dampens out before importing additional loads and minimize your translation rates. Do not import EVA loads into the batteries on the EP. Copy off. And uh, Nick, I know you know, but I'm going to say it anyway, this uh, H2 scoop is pointing towards the radiator, and this H1 scoop pointing away from the radiator. Copy that. I'm heading that way. I'm on the AP and looking for handrail for the crew outside. Five seconds before I end over. Going through another handover between satellites here. We'll be without video for for just a little bit, but uh, sh should get that back momentarily. Crew members continuing to make good progress in today's spacewalk, which we are almost one hour into, 58 minutes and a half to be precise. Uh, the crew members are getting set up for the for the work of installing the adapter plates that will allow us to start using the new batteries, lithium-ion batteries that the space station's robotic arm installed, replacing the older nickel-hydrogen batteries that and we've uh, been using for Christina, decades. Back with you, Christina. Your next step is still that crew log bag number two on the EP handrail seven three one six. Copy, 7316. And that's uh, next to slot Foxtrot. Copy, in work. And here's a view of Christina Cook at that exposed uh, platform where the old batteries, n well, the new batteries came to the space station uh, on board the uh, Jap Japanese HTV. Copy, and you can retrieve the ratchet wrench with the hex driver from the crew log bag. Your next step is going to be to brake torque on uh, Echo and Foxtrot H1. I'll have a few more words once you get there. Six new lithium-ion batteries were uh, delivered to the space station on this pallet uh, back in September. And with the help of the robotic arm, nine uh, old nickel-hydrogen batteries will leave the space station on it uh, on board the next HTV. Continue to take it easy for the next hour or so. Copy. Copy. Although there are nine old nickel-hydrogen batteries from this uh, segment of the truss, uh, only s nine of them will fit on the, or rather, although there are 12 nickel-hydrogen batteries, only nine of them will fit on the exposed pallet. So the other three will be uh, st stored long-term, or rather, two will be stored long-term, or two will be used to, to replace one of the uh, new batteries that we're having trouble getting a charge on, and then one will be stowed long-term. So again, nine are leaving the station on the uh, exposed pallet, while three and all will be staying at the space station. Okay, come off. Square scoops are installed. 
Copy, Nick. Uh, Square Scoops installed. Thank you. On slot two, uh, your next steps are going to be to translate uh, to the P4 non keel side, which is the 4A side, uh, which is ISS Zenith, and uh, to retrieve the APFR that's in that with 14, stow it on your BRT, and then come back to the Nadir side. APFR is another. Copy the ratchet branch with the hex driver. Uh, you will start, Christina, by AP Echo, which is the nadir slot on the EP uh, H1. And I'd like you to confirm once you're in the position that you have one line flush on the hex driver. As I was saying, uh, following that uh, conversation with Nick Hague and Tomah Pesquet, uh, the APFR we'll probably be hearing a lot about over the course of the day. That's an articulating portable foot restraint that the crew uses to anchor themselves into a work site while they are uh, busy with their hands and not able to necessarily hold on. Uh, and then uh, we also heard uh, Christina Cook getting into the work uh, loosening the bolts on the adapter plates that she and Hague will be installing today. There are three that she'll be working on, uh, adapter plates E, F, and D in, in that order. And then uh, they'll be installing those with the batteries, the lithium ion batteries that the space station's robotic arm has already installed to the in to into the integrated el electronics assembly. One line flush, and Mr. Farmer, with you, I'll do box trot. Each one first. And uh, Christina Foxtrot H1 first is fine. We copy one line flush. Your go to brake torque, max one turn. Copy. Torque broken on Foxtrot H1. Yeah, I'm at the APFR tomorrow. <clears throat> yes, Nick, you are go to retrieve the APFR on your. Bull three as I was going by. And Nick, that's awesome. And you can uh, retrieve that APFR, put it on your BRT, and uh, and go back to the nadir side of P4. And work. And tomorrow, I have one line flush on Echo H1. Copy one line flush on Echo H1. You are go to break torque, max one turn. Nick Egg reporting that he has uh, retrieved the foot restraint that he was working on. He'll be moving that to another location. Meanwhile, Christina Cook has gotten uh, the first of the bolts uh, uh, loosened. And uh, what uh, she's doing, uh, you'll hear her talking about bolts H1 and H2 for each of the three adapter plates. Uh, each each adapter plate has two bolts. One's a structural bo bolt and one's a jacking bolt. And so she'll be loosening first the stru structural bolts on uh, adapter plates E and F, and then the jacking bolts. And then she'll get started with the adapter plate D. H2, confirm one line flush. Again, would it be okay to do Fox Trot H2 first? I'm just in a good position for it. It is good. View here from Cook's helmet as she works on uh, the uh, second bolt on adapter plate F. Again, she'll be doing three of these adapter plates and all. Then she and uh, Nick Haig will be moving the adapter plates to the integrated electronics assembly for installation. Hey, tomorrow I've got the ATF arm of VOT. I'm heading back. Okay, Nick, uh, quick question. Do you, could you see that if bolt three was popped out on the MMOD?
and don't go back and check. It's just in case you saw it, because you say you snapped a few pictures. It's, it's right, it's right here. I just want to look down. It looks, it looks like it's fully recessed. We we copy. Thanks, Nick. Uh, that's awesome. You can. Yeah, no, but that's that's good enough for our purposes. You can go back to uh, the nadir side, and uh, your next step will be to install that APFR in WIF 9, which is the inboard WIF uh, on P4, and I'll have settings for you. View here giving you a great uh, idea of how massive the solar arrays on the space station are. You can see uh, Christina Cook kind of in the middle of the screen attached to or uh, hanging off of uh, the exposed pallet and those uh, orange um, rectangles in the background are, are just a portion of the solar arrays that are generating the space station's electricity. Okay, so I'm off. I'm at with 13. And uh, Nick, you have to install this API file in with uh, 9, right? The inboard with. So 9. Yep. Inboard with. Yep, I see it. And for so I have the NH2 of Echo, one line flush. Copy H2 of Echo, one line flush. Uh, you are go to break torque, max one turn, and if you can, it's not required, but if you can re report the number of turn approximately. Required, but if you can re report the number of turn approximately. Called in approximately one third turn, and torque is broken on H. Oh. Copy one third of a turn, and torque is broken on H2 echo. Your next move is delta, so the forward facing slot uh, H1, one line flush. And then Nick, your settings for this APFR are going to be a clocking of one, Romeo, Romeo, kilo, 12. Clocking of one, Romeo, Romeo, kilo, 12. And work. That is a good read back. It's in with nine, it's full twist test, black on. 
Kapinik uh, in WIF 9 black on black uh, good pull twist test. And we will take a glove and hap from you. And uh, Christina, let me know when you're in position on AP Delta H1. Christina, let me know when you're in position on AP Delta H1. Okay. Come off. I'll confirm the settings here real quick and then I'll give you the glove and hap check. Okay, Nick, sounds good. And uh, Christina and Nick were 30 seconds uh, from a 20 seconds handover. I'm copy. Please, hand over. <laughs> he wasn't kidding. I just timed it perfectly. Yeah, he did. Are you guys talking about me during a handover? Uh, Maybe. I timed my call to you perfectly over the handover. All right, Christina. I mine flush on each one of Delta. You are go to break torque, max one turn. Break torque, max one turn. one third of a turn, H1 Delta. Copy, talk broken, uh, and now your next step is break torque on Delta H2. One mind flush, Delta H2. You are go to break torque, max one turn on Delta H2. Complete one-third turn, about the H2. And Chamat, I've got good gloves, no change, dry hat. Confirm the settings on the APFR, one Romeo, one Romeo, Romeo, Kilo 12. Uh, we copy, Nick, thank you. Those are good settings. Uh, we copied your glove and hat check. And with that, you are go to translate to the EP. Uh, and same as Christina, uh, we have that plan to drop your green hook underneath the CETA cart on that uh, Nadir handrail. And uh, Christina, after you've done with Delta H2, you can stow that ratchet wrench in crew lock bag number two, uh, grab the PGT that's attached to that bag, and I'll have settings for you to retorque Delta H2. Copy and work. I've got eyes on Christina. Hello. Hello. And then, Nick, we see you crossing the Sarge. A uh, reminder from us, a caution, while you'll be working on translating on the EP, you guys should not impart simultaneous loads at the same time into the structure. I'm copy. You copy. Crew members are continuing to make good progress on today's spacewalk, getting ready to uh, take those adapter plates that Christina Cook has been uh, loosening the bolts on and move them over to the integrated electronics assembly. Uh, that's the main work of today's spacewalk, and it mirrors what uh, the 
spacewalkers did last week, uh, Nick Hagen and McLean that time. However, after the spacewalk last week, we did notice one issue with uh, one of the batteries that was installed, one of the new lithium ion batteries. And today we have here with us uh, Brinielle Rodriguez, who is the lead mission evaluation room manager. Is that right, Brinielle? That is correct. She's going to tell us a little bit about what uh, the team on the ground saw and uh, how we're how we're moving forward from here. Yes, thank you, Brandy. So uh, last Friday when we were activating that power channel after the EVA, we did see um, an issue with one of the, the batteries that we installed. Essentially, it didn't come up as expected, and our telemetry indicated that we saw some higher voltage than we expected. So after um, standing down from that, we actually took a look at all the data over the weekend, um, had a, several long meetings, and uh, are planning forward essentially to put that particular battery back into its previous configuration with the nickel hydrogen batteries. Um, we so we're basically switching out and going to use the old ones. That is correct. That is correct. Yeah, we think that uh, we have saw more, more voltage than expected. Um, not sure why, but uh, essentially we don't think that lithium ion battery is good anymore. And actually to attempt to get that power channel back up into a better configuration, we want to put those nickel hydrogen back in so that uh, ISS can have more power on that channel. Okay, but uh, crew members aren't going to do that exactly today. They're going to do a little get ahead work for that. That's correct. Yeah, this is going to be a joint effort between the crew as well as our cool robotics guys, um, and they're going to be able to do some work. So today, what the crew's going to do after they get all the new lithium ion batteries put in is they're actually going to go back to that previous side. They're going to remove one of those cables. So kind of the cool thing about these lithium ions is that they have a cable that connects them to an adapter plate that you mentioned. And so we're going to remove that adapter or remove that cable, and the purpose of removing that is so that we can get our robotics arm in there and actually pull out those batteries robotically to save some time for the crew when they go back out there on that third EVA. And I think one of the things we're going to be seeing the crew do today with the batteries that they are installing is is connecting that cable. So this is a, con a cable they connected last week. They're going to disconnect it so that now they can kind of redo or undo the work that the robotic arm did previously. Right, yeah. We'll deconfigure it is kind of how we, we term that. And so we'll remove the cable, and you'll, we'll see the cable being installed today as well, a, a different cable, right. um, and they'll remove the cable that we previously installed, and also um, what we call is kind of releasing some of the torques on these bolts um, to uh, just so you get provide a little bit more flexibility for the robotics community so they can pull those batteries back off. Okay, and then it will take some additional work on the next spacewalk, is that right? It will, yeah. So. Um, What's really neat is the batteries are able to be robotically removed, but on the adapter plates actually always require a crew member to move them. So we have one adapter plate that we'll have to move. Um, in order to do that, we will actually have to have the crew go get that on that third EVA. So hopefully next week we'll be able to get uh, the robotics team in there. They'll be able to move those batteries, kind of do some choreography to help make the third EVA a little bit more efficient for the crew to grab the adapter plate, move that out of the way so we can put those nickel hydrogen back in. And uh, we also talked a little bit about the battery discharge control unit. What is that? That is a it's a pretty cool piece of device actually. So what the the battery control discharge unit, I call it the BCDU, okay. <laughs> I won't lie, I speak an acronym, is uh, what it does is it uh, charges the batteries and it also discharges the batteries. So when you have the sun out and the sun's getting hit in the solar arrays and the solar arrays are getting all, absorbing all that energy, um, the BCDU takes that and then charges the batteries. Okay. But now when you go into Eclipse, when you don't have the sun, the batteries kick on and the BCDU takes all that cool battery power and brings it to station. So essentially it's with a charging unit and a discharging unit for those batteries. So pretty critical in the power system role. So when that, um, we think there's a, a potential fault in there that caused this um, issue. And so what we want to do is also replace that particular one with one of our spares on orbit. Okay, got it. So um, one of the um, one of the things we'll be watching, I guess, as as we get done with this spacewalk, is how these three new batteries that we're putting the adapter plates on, how they work. Um, we have, a, I guess, a good set of new batteries on, over on the starboard side of the space station. So we have good reason to think the batteries are, are, are working okay. Do we do anything special with these three new ones? We had a lot of good discussion about that. Um, yeah, there's no reason to suspect any of these batteries have any issues. Uh, we 
still working through all the, the anomaly discussions, but yeah, so today after we get all these uh, lithium ions installed, the adapter plates connected, we're going to go ahead and start powering up that channel. And our teams are actively engaged. They're working, they're looking at all that telemetry, and they're going to monitor it really closely to see if they see what we like to call kind of funnies in the telemetry. But essentially, nope, I think we're going to be good. I think we're going to power those up. And, and uh, I think that the issue that we saw on the other side, I would be surprised if we saw the same issue on this side. And then going forward, we'll have, let's see, five new lithium ion batteries and then two of the old nickel hydrogen batteries that, it, or is that what we'll, we'll just kind of use? for the rest of our lives, or? <laughs> no, it's a good, this good point. Well, we'll be in this, we call it a mixed configuration. So we'll be on one side, one power channel, we'll have two lithium ion and then the nickel hydrogen set. Um, and remember that you need two nickel hydrogen really to replace one lithium ion. So you'll have five, those five batteries. Eventually, we will go ahead and update and come back out and put another lithium ion in the place of those nickel hydrogen. Uh, those nickel hydrogen have really done a great job over the course of the past years, but they're ending their life. We've used them quite a bit. Um, stations getting to be a little bit older, so um, we want to put those lithium ions in there to give it more, more, t sure. uh, more power for the long term. So we will eventually go back and put a lithium ion in there as soon as we can get a spare on orbit. Gotcha. All right. Well, um, we really appreciate you coming and talking with us. This is really helpful, and I'm sure uh, everybody appreciates it who's watching as well. So thanks so much. Before you go, though, uh, we said that you were the lead mission evaluation room manager. Tell us what that is. Sure. So um, we are uh, a group of folks that uh, actually sit right below the flight control team here, and we support the the real-time flight control team. We are the engineering team to the real-time flight control team. Okay. So we have 22 consoles, um, uh, hundreds of individuals that support it down there. It's uh, fully packed. It's a, it's a great room. But essentially, we are also providing them real-time um, data, real-time expertise on the systems, um, as well as if anything goes wrong, we are the lead for the anomaly resolution. So we uh, are very involved in this particular one. All right. Well, we appreciate your help, too. Thank you for your time. Have a great day. Thanks. Thanks. And after that, Red is in position. We'll go for Foxtrot H2. I got some off. Well, we're going to work on Fox Cut H2. We'll get set up. Yeah, no rush at all, uh, Nick. We're ahead of the timeline by some, so you guys take your time. I'm staying set, Anna, so move into your position where you need, and then. Get set and then get to where I need to go. Okay, copy. I have your two rut on the adapter plate, box truck. Okay. I believe we're ready to have H2. Okay. I'm going to put some slack in the rut and lock it out. Is locked out. Copy, Christina. Your uh, RET is locked out. You can install the hex driver onto uh, AP Foxtrot H2 and confirm one line flush. There's one line flush. One line flush. You are go to release. Uh, Foxtrot H2, and we expect 19 turns, 1-9. Nine. The N-Work. You know, if you think I'm tapping too hard down here, I'm just trying to dampen it out. I think well. Okay.
19 turns. It's a look free, yeah. I'll hold it in place. Copy, release, yeah. 19 so turns. You can, yes, go ahead, Christina. Yes, go ahead, Christina. Yep, that's happy. And you can uh, transfer that PGT to Nick, and Nick, you can receive the PGT and assist Christina with towing the AP Foxtrot on her BRT. Why don't you go ahead and put it on your BRT, and then we'll get the PGT. You're in a good position. Seeing a view here from Christina Cook's helmet camera. She's been working to uh, release some of the bolts on two of the adapter plates that she and Nick Haig are going to be moving over to the integrated electronics assembly for installation. These are uh, the adapter, adapters that are needed to make the new batteries work with the space station's electronic system, get them charging so that uh, they can collect solar energy from the space station's solar arrays. She's finished releasing her bolts and handing the pistol grip tool that uh, the crew members used to do that over to Nick Haig to uh, continue with that work. Big and unwieldy, so I'm going to help you swing it over the top. Thank you. Nice job. It's about against your cliff now. All right, great. Kind of bounced up a little bit. If you want to stabilize it again, every time you move, it wants to swing. So, okay. Leave nice and slow. You should be okay. Okay. PGT is right next to your hand if you can grab it. Let's do a quick tether check for me after that BRT swing. Yep. And this here? Yeah, I got the PGT. And uh, Nick, once you get that PGT, you can attach a RET to AP Echo, lock out that RET, and leave some slack. Okay, copy some off. Uh, give Christina a good configuration here, and then we'll move into position for Echo. Okay, I'll show my safety cover in a good config. Okay. Ready to move to Echo. Move into position, and then, uh, and then I'll go once you're set. Happy. I am feeling it bounce. EP. Yeah. Yeah. Nice and slow. Happy. Okay. I'm going to get some space if you want to translate now, and I'll take this GP. Do not have it. Okay, I have the PGT. You got it? Got it. I'll translate down to you. Safety tether is behind me. Put eyes on that. It is behind you. It's behind both of your legs. So yeah, I'm gonna good. I'm gonna come up and then get my legs on the other side of that. All right. There you go. There we go. I'm gonna try to fair lead it a little bit. Stay where we're here. H1's fully released. We're down here at H2. That is correct, correct Nick. Uh, AP Echo H2 on your PGT Alpha 7 counterclockwise 2 and confirm one line flush. Confirm one line flush. Okay, and working. Line flush. And can I can stabilize seven. if you want to drive. 
from Alpha 7. Just pass a little um, bit. Hang on. I We're counter the... one. That's counter two. I see Alpha. I get seven. You see Alpha? Yep, I got Alpha. Okay. I'll stabilize if you want to pull the trigger. Okay, okay. we see you in a good config. You are go to release uh, Echo H2, 19 turns, 1-9. 19 turns, 1-9. Copy, and if you find counting turns on this one. Go for it. Okay, adding turns. Okay, I'm going to need to stabilize. Get it, make sure you're in a good position there if you want to drive it. That's fine. I'll uh, stabilize on this end so we don't side load it. Okay, I'm ready to drive again. So. Okay. And that was one turn prior to torque out on that last one? Yep. Okay. Starting turn. Good turn. It's bouncing. That's me. Nineteen turns on the display. That's what I'm counting. We show nineteen turns total. Stand by. Stand and by. Don't move. Oh, well, I've got it down. Got it. Yep. Don't move. I gotta get a red on this. Yep. It. I pulled out a soft draft when I tried to take the piece out. So. Okay, it's ready. Okay, you want to get in position with the CRT? Uh, we copy 19 turns. You have your red on it. That's a good release. On it, that's a good release. And, um, you want to lock out your red? All right, leave. Hang on. Get a good red on it now. We've got a little bit of time. It is in soft dock. Got my BRT red on it. Let me get in position to receive it. You can see here in the middle of the screen, Christina Cook in her all-white spacesuit uh, with one of the adapter plates the crew will be working with already uh, stored on her body restraint tether, BRT, you'll hear the crew call it. It's uh, how they'll be moving it from place to place since they use their hands to move around the space station and can't hold it in their hand. She is going to be... Uh, Position right there. Delivering uh, adapter plate F over to the integrated electronics assembly while uh, Nick Hang will be moving adapter plate E over to the to the assembly. Then they'll be installing both of those and uh, coming back for adapter plate D. And uh, you guys do what you got to do to uh, store this AP echo on, uh, on your BRT, Nick, and uh, remind you to turn that PGT with the X driver off OFF once you're done. And the PGT with the hex driver is off OFF. Copy. Thanks, Christina. Okay. Well, you hold your position while I cross the bridge. Okay. And then let me translate outboard a little bit. I'll deconflict from the safety tether, and then you can come across. Copy. And Tamal, we are both configured and ready for next step. Okay, well done there on the EP. So you guys are go to translate back to P4. Uh, Nick, you're going to lead that translation. Uh, and you're going aft at P4. Christina, you're going to follow. You have to retrieve your green hook, and uh, you're going to be forward, ISS forward at uh, the IA. Happy. And copy that, Tamal. I'm going aft. 
and I'm on the bridge. Copy all search answers. With both of those adapter plates retrieved from the external or the exposed pallet of, uh, that was brought up by the Japanese H-2 transfer vehicle, crew members are now making their way back to the P-4 truss on the port side of the station and specifically to the integrated electronics assembly fort where all of its batteries are located. And I pulled up my fair lead on the uh, port seat approach. Copy, Nick. Copy, Nick. Once they uh, arrive there, they'll be coupling those adapter plates with two lithium ion batteries that have already been installed. And the pair of uh, battery and adapter plate will replace one of the old nickel hydrogen batteries each. So these two adapter plates paired with two new batteries will replace two of the old batteries. They're coming, Christina. Good, I'm on the bridge. View here from Christina Cook's helmet camera. She makes her way back to that integrated electronics assembly. To actually install those adapter plates, there will be two bolts that they need to uh, need to drive, and also a cable that attaches uh, that connects the the adapter plate to the new batteries. All three of the batteries being installed today are part of the uh, 2A power channel for the space station. The station has eight power channels in all, and last week the crew members worked with the 4A power channel. Each power channel has three strings of battery, and the string could be two nickel hydrogen batteries or one of these new lithium ion batteries. check that your gauntlets are in place. Okay, I am about to cross the side and my gauntlets are in place. Copy. Come on, I was going to drop a green hook. Uh, you can drop a green hook, Nick. Uh, we have for you a fair lead near the P4 handrail 5109, which is kind of at the aft inboard uh, corner of that P4 IEA, but again, it's up to you. Copy that. And Christina, I have a caution for you because you'll be on the forward side, which is where the radiator is. So you'll have to avoid kick loads and inadvertent contact with the P4 radiator is going to be in your in your feet area. Yeah, I am at the IEA, the forward side. Copy. Jamal, green hook's down on 5109. Copy, Nick. Your green hook is on 5109. Your next step is to uh, ingress the APFR. Didn't work. Well, Peter's coming on. And Christina, you can position yourself. Okay, uh, can you get in some yeah, go ahead. Just telling Nick, I see him in position and uh, ready for next step. 
Okay, so um, we'll let Nick get into the APFR, and then your next step for you, Christina, will be to uh, transfer your AP Foxtrot to him uh, with a red swap. Both spacewalkers in view here at the Integrated Electronics Assembly on the P4 segment of the truss. You can see Nick Haig uh, near the top of the screen and Christina Cook near the bottom of the screen, both with adapter plates. Haig is going to be getting into a foot restraint to hold him in place while he works, while uh, Cook is going to be uh, attaching a tether to a handrail to, to uh, hold herself in place. Then they'll both begin getting to work on installing their adapter plates. Nick, I'm just in board of you. Any the APFR? Yep. I got one here with it. Working on the second. Copy. That's what you see. And uh, Christina, if you can check your WES. You can check your WES. Pushed off again, coming back on, green light. Copy green light. Seems like the WVS is uh, choosing their crew member last week with Nick, and uh, today it's you. <laughs> Tom Pesquet there asking for a check on the WVS, which stands for wireless video system. That is uh, the helmet camera views. We had lost Christina Cook's helmet camera view there for a minute, but uh, she was able to, to get it back online for us, and you're seeing it here. Getting an up-close view of the integrated electronics assembly. Is your ingress aid is nice and tucked in? Coming to me. Good. Uh, okay, Nick, if you... To pass you for if you can check uh, after you've checked that your the ingress aid is stowed like you just did, that the tethers are clear and inspect the IA interface and blind mate connectors for FOD. The interface and the blind mate connectors on the IEA look free of FOD. Good EMI band. Okay, that sounds good. So you can perform a red swap uh, on the AP, and Christina, you can transfer the AP Foxtrot to Nick. Okay. Working on presenting that. Other point. And up here. Almost put a hand on it to bring it just a little bit further. Nope. I have a red on it. Happy. All removed flying. Okay. Well, it's now uh, close to you. Yep. Thank you. Okay, Nick, once you have control of that AP with your right on it, you can verify that the blind mate connectors uh, will be oriented ISS outboard, and after that, you'll have a go to soft dock this AP Foxtrot to the slot 6. Okay, copy that, and the connectors are towards my knees, that's outboard. Copy, and uh, you can also lock out that red and leave some slack that could help with the install. Roger. Nikkei getting the uh, go to start uh, installing the first of the day's adapter plates, adapter plate F in this case. We'll be soft docking it and then uh, driving two bolts to actually hold it into place. Yeah. 
Yeah. Lines are lined up. Black. If you go down low, you should be able to see through that hole. Okay. I think that's soft dock. You can confirm from the side. On this side, H1 is definitely over the cone. Yep, and I'm in soft dock on H2, so I think we're aligned. Okay. okay. I can get out of your way. Tomorrow we have Foxtrot and Softdock. Copy. Good job, you guys. Um, and now, Christina, you can retrieve the PGT from Krulog Bag 1. Uh, the PGT was a hex driver and uh, pass it on uh, to Nick. And Nick, I'll have settings for you. See you, Mark. And uh, Nick, once you get that PGT, big picture, we'll go for uh, H2 first, and then H1. And then H1. Copy. Each of these adapter plates uses two bolts to hold it in place, uh, referred to as H1 and H2, with one of them uh, being a structural bolt and one of them being a jack bolt. H2 is the jacking bolt and H1 is a structural bolt. Um, Nick Keg will be uh, installing this first adapter plate uh, with uh, by driving both of those bolts, starting with H2 and then H1, and then uh, he will be transferring the pistol grip tool back to Christina Cook. After that, uh, there will be some clamps to release that are holding the cable that they'll be installing down, and then a uh, final... You can let go. There's still two reds holding it down. Okay, copy that. Final step is to mate the uh, adapter plate cable to the new battery. The data, that's a data cable that goes between the plate and the battery and provides battery insight. I'll come to you. I'm going to be back in towards my safety cover, so I can see it's not between the legs. Yep, you good thing. I got the PGT. Happy?
Come on, I'm ready for setting. Okay, Nick. Uh, so, first of all, Christina, your next move is to go get that connector cap from the lithium-ion battery in slot 5, which is pretty much where Nick's head should be. Uh, and, uh, Nick, your settings are alpha 7, clockwise 2. Man, I want you to grab that cap okay. and, then, uh, and then move into position to put a finger on this so it doesn't uh, work out. Okay, copy. And you guys are coming up on the sunrise in two minutes. Thanks, Thanks. Okay, Nick, the cap is removed. Copy, Christina. The cap is removed and uh, it's rented to your mini workstation. Confirm. And Nick, your settings Nick, for the PGT are Alpha 7, clockwise 2. Alpha 7, clockwise 2. Alpha 7, clockwise 2 set. Copy. You can install that hex uh, driver onto H2, which is uh, outboard, so towards the inside of the IEA. And uh, Christina, you're the helper, so feel free to do what you got to do. Okay, tomorrow it is inserted. I am showing second line flush. Uh, Nick, you confirm one line flush, correct? Nick, you confirm one line flush, correct? We're coming on. Okay, one line flush, good config on the H2. You can drive that bolt 16, 17 turns to torque. Yeah, stand by tomorrow. I've got, there we go, one line flush now. Go to go to drive. Okay. Copy some off. Then I want you to pull into position to uh just hover a finger over it. Start driving. We're a little under two hours into today's spacewalk, and both Christina Cook and Nick Hager are doing a great job of staying ahead of the timeline. They're uh, a little uh beyond uh, what they expected to have done at this point, so we're making good time as they begin installing the first of the three adapter plates they'll be working on. And they're also coming into sunlight for this trip around the Earth. They're uh, about 260 miles above the Pacific Ocean, heading towards the southernmost uh, point on this trip around the Earth, and then they'll be crossing over the coast of South America and heading northeast toward Africa. I'll get LED test both. The seven clockwise two set. One line flush. Right, driving. turns at 9.3 actual torque, good green light. Copy Nick, 16 turns, 16, 9.3 and good green light. That is good. You can move on to uh, H1 and uh, remember you could have interference with the wall of the IEA, so uh, feel free to use uh, Christina's help as needed. Two lines, one flush on H1 towards the IEA wall. The first of the bolts on uh, Nick Hang's adapter plate now uh, installed, beginning to work on the second. On your back. I think I've got it. Okay. And correct. Good settings and H1, two lines, one flush. You are go to drive. We expect about five turns. Right 
I got 9.1 actual torque, five turns, good green light. And that's the second bolt. One uh, torque, five turns, good green light. That's a good install uh, of that AP Foxtrot. You can transfer the PGT to uh, EV2. And Christina, you're going to stow that PGT at crew lock bag one. And uh, Nick, you can release your RET and uh, unlock and start working on those TA clamps. Copy that. And we're 15 seconds from a 20 second handover. Do you want to try to release that uh, electrical connector? Okay, yep. let me get out of the way. Stand by. With those two bolts installed, the next step is to release three clamps and then uh, demate the connector cable that uh, is on the adapter plate uh, so that uh, Nick Hagen can hand it off to Christina Cook to mate it with one of the new lithium lithium ion batteries. I have one TA clamp release. Okay. You've got the cap. Are you in a good yep. position to... Let me get... And we're back with you. TA clamps to release if you want to hand me the connector. I might be able to install it. Copy. Mom, we have uninstalled the connector and TA clamps to release. Copy TA clamps are released and the connector is demated. Uh, Christina, you can uh, check that connector for no fault, good pins, good EMI bend, and lever over center. And then I'll remind you to route this AP cable clear of the PFCF and uh, DSCU robotics corridor. No more than one twist. Copy. And uh, Nick, Nick's in the position to connect it. Yeah. We confirm no fault, yeah. but EMI band. I left when I demated it. Yeah. No fog. Pins. My band. Copy. So that's a good check. So if that routing is clear of the corridor, uh, Nick, you have a go to connect uh, that P4 to the J4 on the adjacent lithium ion battery. Copy to Mark. And uh, Christina, you are go to install the connector cap uh, on the AP dummy jack J4. Copy. And uh, Nick, if you haven't done so already, you can release your RET uh, from the AP and unlock. Copy that, Tomas. And I, uh, Christina, when you're done with the cap, if you can reach my RET. Okay, cap coming on, one moment. And Tomas, I've got the, uh, the cable and soft dock. And it looks like it's tending away from the. Uh, Copy, uh, cable in soft dock, yeah. and uh, we're watching. Can you, can you give us a WES view? Yep, I'm going to, before we try to mate it, if you can undo my RET, no, okay. no. then yep. I'll be able to lean back far enough to give them WBS. Sounds good, and work. And I have the connector cap on J4. Okay. Copy, Christina, good job. I'll grab these TA clamps, pull them down here. Cool, good call. Are you ready? Ready. Coming. Okay. Thanks. Come on, I'm going to try to lean far enough back to give you a view. 
Okay, Nick, we appreciate the effort. Three TA clamps are installed. Close. Copy, Christina. Three TA clamps are installed, and uh, Nick, it looks beautiful and clear from the corridor. Okay. And now I'll take a glove inspection and have check from both of you. Okay, copy, so I'm going to make the cable. Let me know if you need a hand. I can push down on you. Okay. Need it over center. Thanks. That is the first of the three adapter plates that the spacewalkers are installing today done. That is adapter plate F if you're keeping track on the scorecard. We've got D and E also still to go. Copy, Nick. I'm going to change the gloves for EV2, so I have. Copy, and uh, with that, the TA clamps being closed, and uh, Nick, you are go to roll this APFR to Foxtrot, uh, which should actually f point it towards the empty slot 4. Okay, copy that. Crew still about 30 minutes ahead of their timeline, now just a three minutes over two hour mark. Two hours and three minutes into today's spacewalk, which is scheduled to last six and a half hours. But again, they are ahead of schedule. Next, they'll be getting started on uh, adapter plate E, the second of the three that they're installing today. Okay, safety feathers are looking good. Watch your feet as you turn the corner. Happy. Safety feathers stringing back just fine. The installation of this one will be a repeat of the first one with two bolts to install and then uh, three clamps to release the cable that's on the adapter plate so that they can connect it to its corresponding lithium ion battery. While the crew gets set up for that uh, next adapter plate uh, with uh, Nick Haig uh, adjusting a foot restraint, uh, we have a little time for a few more social media questions. You can keep submitting yours by sending them using the hashtag AskNASA. But uh, we actually have a question from Manuel who is asking, do the old batteries become space junk or do they eventually re-enter the atmosphere? Uh, it's a little bit uh, of the second. Uh, most of the old batteries, nine out of the uh, 12, will be put on an external, on the uh, exposed pallet of the H2 transfer vehicle that comes to the station next. Uh, and then the H2 transfer vehicle itself will be burned up in the Earth's atmosphere, effectively getting rid of them. Um, but the remaining three that don't fit on the exposed pallet will be stored uh, or used at the International Space Station. The plan was to store them all, but we'll be using two of them to replace, uh, at least temporarily, the, the battery that we had an issue with uh, after the first spacewalk. And the cable is still out of the corridor. Okay. And it's stable. Looks like a good work envelope. We also have a question from Johnny asking, do, how did the astronauts stay hydrated during the spacewalk? Uh, that's a great question. They are out uh, of the space station for six and a half hours at a time and in their spacesuit for even longer than that. So obviously they're not able to take a break and get a drink or even a snack. So to combat that, they keep a bottle of, uh, or a, a store of water in their spacesuit. They basically have uh, kind of a straw they can get to easily during the spacewalk to uh, to take sips as needed. They don't get any snacks during the spacewalk, however. And one more for now. Bruno is asking, do the astronauts have to worry about space debris in orbit during the spacewalk? 
I don't know that they worry about it, but it's something that we definitely keep an eye on. Um, we it, it could it could easily create a problem, so we don't uh, want to expose the spacewalkers to any more risk from space debris than we have to. So we keep an eye on what space debris is in the area, what to expect, and what to avoid, and uh, we we plan accordingly. Outboard, uh, and once that is done, you can soft dock this AP. Echo into slot four, lock your red, leaving out slack. That didn't work. And Christina, you can assist Nick, and your next move is going to be to transfer the PG2, the hex driver, to Nick. Okay. Nick, do you want me to you on from here? Uh, if you, to your if side. you can see the blind mate connectors lining up there. Yep, I can. Okay, you're in good position on them. Stay down. This even. It looks like you should be in soft dot. Put the top down a little bit, pitch it away from you. But... Doesn't feel like soft dot. Uh, that's, that's the line. <laughs> that's it. Yeah. Hovering over the connectors, right over top of them. Your lines are aligned all around. Yeah, the top dock isn't as strong on this one as it is the other one, or I'm just not pushing hard enough to get it to go in. Lined up, doesn't it? It sure does. Okay. Lined up on all sides. All right, so I'm off. I think it's on top up. Yeah, we're uh, following along, and uh, we'll soon find out. <laughs> you can retrieve the PGT from <laughs> from Christina, and your settings are Alpha Seven, Clockwise Two. Alpha Seven, Clockwise Two. Alpha Seven, Clockwise Two is set. I'm around it. And we're going for this H2 one bolt, one line flush on H2. One line flush on H2. Copy. Starting turn. You can drive 16 to 17 turns to torque. Jacking. Nick Hague starting on the two bolts for adapter plate E. This adapter plate will also provide storage for one of the old, uh, two of the old lith uh, lithium, excuse me, one of the old lithium, uh, nickel hydrogen batteries. Uh, that is one of the nice things about these adapter plates is that they do also provide that extra storage that'll let us keep the ones we uh, don't have room for on the H2 transfer vehicle that will take the Take nine of the batteries away from the space station. Copy 9.1, uh, good green light. How many turns again? 17.17. 17, 17.17, 17, awesome. So it was jacking uh, like we expected. You can move on to H1 and confirm two lines, one flush. One bolt down on adapter plate E, one to go. Okay, I've got one, two lines showing, one flush. Copy, it's a good config, you are go to drive, uh, we expect about five turns to torque. Copy, driving. It's on off, five turns. 9.1 on the torque, good green light, H1. Copy, Nick, awesome, this is a good install. Uh, 9.1, five for the torque, five turns, good green light. You can uh, hand that PGT back to Christina. Christina, you can hand it back to uh, Krulok bag one, and Nick, you can release your ret and unlock. You can release your ret and unlock. Copy, same work. And Tamar, do I have a go to release the uh, Nectar cap from the lithium ion battery? Uh, yes, Christina, you do have a go.
and Nick, uh, you can start working on those TA clamps. Work. And I have the extra cap in it. Copy, Christina. TA clamps are released. Copy, Nick. Uh, good job. You are go to the mate, the AP connector, P4 from the APJ4 dummy, and uh, we, whoever of you is in the best position will try to connect it. I think I can connect it and I can give you the cap. We're in a good position, so. Yeah, it's going to be a little bit outside my reach from here. Copy. So. If you've got the cap, I can put that on real quick. Okay. There's the cap. I got There's the, the cable. Got the cable. I'm, uh, I'm going to install the cap on the dummy connector. Yes, uh, Nick, you are good. It sounds good. Install the cap on the dummy connector, APA Co. slot 4. Uh, and, uh, Christina, if you can check for us that this uh, AP cable has no FOD, uh, good pins, good MI bands, lever over center. It does, and I'll make that connection on the battery. Copy. Uh, you are go to connect to that J4 on the lithium-ion battery in slot 3. Connector cap is installed on the dummy connector. Your ret's coming back to you. Nana. Copy. Copy, Nick. Your next step uh, is to relocate the APFR to with. 13, so uh, a bit outboard from where it is right now, and uh, the only setting you want to change is the roll, with the roll of echo. Great view here from Nick Haig's helmet camera, looking at uh, Christina Cook, who is working to connect that uh, second adapter plate cable. Copy, Christina, good job. Uh, and with that, I'll take a glove and hat check from you. And Christina Cook there reporting that she's got that second adapter plate uh, cable mated, which means uh, that's two adapter plates down, one to go. But we do uh, are going to take a pause on the adapter plate work now to install one of the old nickel hydrogen batteries on top of the plate. Copy, Christina. And uh, big picture for you guys, your next move is to uh, relocate battery two to slot four on that APA code that you just installed. And that's going to be after this uh, APFR is in position in with 13. View here from the cameras uh, on the exterior of the space station with a overview of that integrated electronics assembly where the crew has been working with these uh, adapter plates. You can get a good look at uh, how that all fits together, including the adapter plate that they just installed installed there in the in the middle of the assembly. I think I'll position outboard in curve. Um, yeah, I think that's going to be a good position to try to. And guys, uh, good news. This AP echo that you just installed, checked out. Okay, we have a good activation. Great. Thank you.
And uh, Nick, quick heads up, we think the, the English shade on the APFR is hooking the AP cable, so if you could check that for us. I see it. I'll make sure I deconflict it. Yeah, APFR is installed. Good pull twist to black on black. And if you can uh, check for us as well that your WES is on. Nick Hague working to uh, adjust his uh, foot restraint again to get set up for this next task, which is relocating one of the old batteries, one of the nickel hydrogen batteries, into place uh, for storage on uh, the on the adapter plate that the crew just installed. Yeah, we see it now. It seems those WVS are behaving a little bit. He'll be pulling the old battery that goes on this adapter plate out of one of the slots on the integrated electronics assembly, and that will open up the last slot they need for this uh, final adapter plate that will be installed today. My APR is moved, new settings. This is the echo. Uh, copy, Nick. Good job. Deconflicted with the, uh, deconflicted with the cable. Okay, Nick, that's awesome. Uh, if you have a good locking color, black on black, and a good pull twist test on that APFR, we'll take a glove and half check from you. Okay, copy that. I'm halfway through the ingress, so. I'll give you that glove and half after I'm in. Absolutely. Good ingress. Thanks. Take that right heel out a little bit. You try it again. And then out. You're on top of it. There you go. You're in. Thanks. Ooh. Uh, okay, Nick, you can uh, now stow the Ingersade, and uh, if you could report the nickel hydrogen serial number. Roger. Okay, so my, I've got a good glove check, no change, half dry. Serial number, the nickel hydrogen is 0064. Copy good gloves, dry hab 0064 is what we expect. You can attach your RET to your battery, uh, lock out your RET and leave some slack. And uh, Christina, you can position yourself to receive the battery from uh, Nick. Reminder, we'll have to flip that battery 180 degrees. Okay, copy. I'm currently in position to assist if I can with uh Keeping it level as it comes out and with H1 and I'll reposition uh, station forward when we're ready to pull it out. So I am outboard okay. right now. Okay. Hey, red is on the tether point and it is locked out with slack. Okay, Nick, you can retrieve your own PGT from the swing arm. Uh, your settings will be alpha 7, counter 2. Counter two. Copy. Alpha seven, counter two. 
with his uh, foot restraint and tethers in place, Nick Keggs now ready to unbolt this battery, this old nickel hydrogen battery that they'll be moving. They uh, only have to release one bolt to be able to, to pick it up and move it over to the adapter plate that they installed a moment ago. And again, this opens up the slot for the final adapter plate that they'll be installing next. Alpha 7, counter 2 is set. Copy. You can uh, install your PGT on the H2 scoop and confirm the socket tape line is flush to the scoop. Oh. In work. Tomorrow I've got the, uh, the bottom side of the tape is flush to the square scoop. Okay, Nick, you are, you are go to release this H2, and this H1 was previously released, so that will uh, effectively free up the battery. Okay, copy that. It's worked out. Starting turns. Works out immediately. Good. 10.1 actual torque red look. Okay, we copy. Stand by one. Hey, Nick, uh, the first thing we would like you to do at that point is to check that this H1 bolt is fully released. Uh, and for that, you'll have to uh, seat your socket on the H1 bolt, verify that it's fully seated, and then I'll have some more words for you. One bolt. Fully seated, tape is flush. Copy, and uh, your settings on the PGT will be Alpha 7, Counter 2, and you may feel the bolt skipping if it's fully released, but not as much on the AP. Okay. Turn. Turn. Yeah, it's a very subtle skip. The uh, lock indicator on the H1 is showing unlock, and it, uh, it goes fully to unlock and then springs back just a little bit and then goes fully to unlock like it's uh, skipping. So I think it's fully released. Copy, Nick. Uh, we think so, too. And uh, now the next step would be to go back to this H2 and try as much as you can to relieve side loads, and you'll probably need uh, Christina's help for that. Okay. okay, I'm back at H2, same settings, and tape is flush. Stand by one, Nick. Finger on it before. Okay, uh, Nick, we're discussing it here on the ground. Uh, you have this socket fully engaged. You are go to reattempt this H2 release. Same settings, alpha 7, counter 2. Alpha 7, counter 2, set. Alpha 2, counter 2, set. Or alpha 7, counter 2, set. 
you here from Nick Haig's helmet camera. He's having a little trouble with the bolt that he needed to release on the old battery to be able to relocate it. Uh, okay, Nick, stand by one. We're looking into some more steps for you guys. They're having trouble getting this bolt loosened. Uh, they went ahead and checked uh, the H1 bolt on this battery, which is not the one that uh, Haig was working with. It's actually one that he uh, released on the previous spacewalk, but uh, they found that that was released as expected. So now the team here on the ground's thinking about what to do next to try and get this H2 bolt released. Hey, Nick and Christina, just uh, one more second. We're uh, discussing some more steps for you guys. Standing by, no worries. Uh, Nick, we have uh, another suggestion for you. It's actually to uh, bump up your settings a little bit and go to Bravo 1, uh, counter 2 on your PGT and uh, re-attempt to release that H2 bolt. Okay, copy that, Toma. I have Bravo 1, counterclockwise 2 set. And try again to release this bolt with different settings on the pistol grip tool. Team on the ground thinks it may be similar to a issue they saw during last week's spacewalk, so we're hoping this will help. Okay, you'll have to stand by uh, a little bit, and I'll come back to you in a couple of minutes. That didn't do the trick, so the team here on the ground is going to think about what they want him, uh, Nick Hague, to do next. Christina, if you can, move down to the uh, road down there in that position. Put your feet. Get your station in defector. I don't know if it's going to constrain you too much. Okay, Nick and Christina, uh, next step in our response to that situation is to gonna retrieve the ratchet wrench with a six inch, six inch wobble. It's in crew lock bag one and try to break torque on that H2. We think maybe the torque is not fully broken on that H2. Okay, copy that. I think I, think I can reach it. Okay, if no one else around. I got it. Oh, I thought I had it. Team here on the ground asking Haig to get a different uh, tool to try as he continues to work on getting this bolt on the old nickel hydrogen battery to release so that it can be moved out of the way. On H2. 
Copy. Top flush. Copy. And uh, you are go to attempt breaking torque. It's a maw, torque broken, quarters of a turn. Copy, Nick, torque broken, quarter of a turn. You can uh, tend the uh, ratchet wrench back to the bag, and I'll come back to you right away. Okay, copy that, and it was three quarters turn. Copy, Nick, three quarters turn. And uh, Nick, at that point, we'd like to go back to the nominal settings, uh, Alpha 7, Counter 2, and reattempt that release on H2. For that, I've got Alpha 7, Counter 2 set. So you're go to install on H2. Confirm uh, the socket tape line is flush. You are go to release H2. The ratchet wrench of the team leader on the ground asked uh, Haig to try out on that uh, bolt that wasn't wanting to release. Worked, so he's now back with the pistol grip tool, fully releasing the bolt so that he can pick the battery up and move it uh, with uh, Christina Cook's help uh, out of the way and onto the previous adapter plate that they installed so that they can put a new adapter plate in its place. It's skipping off now. Uh, the lock indicator is showing unlock. That was 19 turns. Let's see if it comes on. Copy, Nick. Uh, 19 turns and the status unlocked. It sounds like a good release. Uh, you can attempt to undock it. Okay, stand by. I'm going to hold your position just, a second, just in case it's not fully released. I might need a finger on there. Okay. Good call. I've got it. Okay. I'm going to pull. Okay. It's free. Copy. I'll wait for you to get in good position. Okay. I'll head forward. Okay, we copy, it's free, that's all good. Uh, Nick, you might want to stow your PGT for the for the moment. And uh, yes, good call on getting on a good position. There'll be a red swap for you guys to perform and then a rotation of this battery, 180 degrees, uh, before, Nick, you can egress the APFR and relocate to a WIF-9. You all come on. In work. With the battery released, uh, Nick Haig will be able to pick it up and hand it off to Christina Cook so that he can uh, again adjust his foot restraint and get into place to install the battery and, uh, on the adapter plate that, they, that the crew previously put in place. That you installed, Foxtrot in slot six. We have good data on it, so we're two successful installs. That's great news, Tamar. Thank you. Great job, you guys. And you're hearing uh, Capcom Thomas Pesquet say that uh, we're seeing another good activation on the batteries that have been, in, or the battery and adapter plate combos that have been installed so far. We've got two out of three done, and after we've moved this uh, ba old nickel hydrogen battery into its stowage location on one of the other adapter plates, we'll be able to finish up the third. Currently above you, Nick. Yep, Kelly. I see you. The 660 outside thing here, we've got a rep that's out flat. Let's that real quick. Yeah, that'll help keep that out of the, uh, out of the way. Okay, Nick. 
I think if you bias yourself over the handrail that's in your hand right now, that'll keep you high enough that I'll be able to get the APFR in the position ingress and not be bumping into you while you're holding the battery. Okay, let me put down a BRT there. And uh, Christina, from, from experience here, it, it seems like the best position would be to have your body's uh, longitudinal axis kind of parallel to those handrails. Good BRT and your left hand on the handrails and your right hand kind of pointing towards Nick, ready to receive the battery. That's, that's what seems to work the best. Okay, great. And in that position, let me get a rut ready. You may want to lock out your mini workstation. It's tugging you out of position a little. There you go. Okay, what I'm going to do is I'm going to back it up and then I'm going to turn it and hand you the H2 scoop. Hey guys, we like that plan. Do you, do you confirm you've had that red swap performed for us? Uh, not red yet. swap is yet to be performed. Cut. I'm going to put your red on the H2, on the H2 scoop. Okay, there you go. Saw a great view there of uh, Nick Haig in the spacesuit with the red stripes handing the battery off. Uh, here it is again, uh, off to Christina Cook in the all white spacesuit. Cook's going to hold on to it while uh, Haig adjusts his foot restraint so that they can reinstall it in a different spot. Put it down towards your hip a little bit, then I'll oh, have to get room to egress and watch the cable down there. Everything looks good. Okay, that's better. Okay. Tricky part here is keeping the battery out of the way of bumping into Nick while he does this work uh, adjusting his foot restraint. And uh, Nick, you are go to relocate this APFR to with uh, nine inboard, and uh, only setting change is a roll back to Foxtrot. Copy that. Roll to Foxtrot. Good view there from uh, Haig's helmet camera at what that uh, foot restraint actually looks like. The whiff that Thomas Pesquet mentioned is the uh, work site interface that allows them to move those uh, foot tethers and other things from work site to work site so that uh, they can set it up wherever needed.
Hey, Tama, I've got to go pull, twist, test, ATFRs, and with nine. Copy, Nick, and that's a good job. And uh, there's just that roll to put back to Foxtrot, and then you can ingress the APFR. And work. Foot restraints are actually called the articulating portable foot restraints, and you can see why here. Hague will be able to move it in the direction he needs to be pointed so that his body is oriented in the right direction when he gets back into it. Over the cable. Yeah. There you go. Hey, Fox trucks. Hand over in five seconds. Okay, that's nice. So, Tamar, the ingress aid came off in my hand. And uh, we're just back oh, with you. Uh, um, copy, copy, Nick. So, if you can put that back in position, we don't have video just now. Yep. Copy that. I try not to lose it. And Nick, if can you, you need put a, a tether on it, up above your right hand on battery three. I'm working on it. Yeah, I got a scoop, so I got somewhere to yep. hang on to. Okay, I got my mini workstation and defector on it. Okay. Going back down to the ATFR and to try to Nick, get it uh, break, break. We'd like you to put a RET if you can, because me workstation, you know, can open up. Uh, so if you can put a RET on it, that's preferred. Yep, copy. Trying to get to a good handhold, so I've got some stability to do that. Yeah, Nick, we're with you. Do do what you got to do. I've got a red on it, Tomah. Uh, copy, you have a red on it, uh, Nick. And Nick, right now, would like you to uh, give us an inspection of that detachment point on the ingress aid. And the next question will be, you think you've rotated it uh, as you were ingressing the APFR? Rotated it uh, as you were ingressing the APFR? Uh, absolutely. Uh, it's showing uh, black on white for the ingress aid. OK, we are copy. And uh, you are go to uh, reinstall it on the APFR. I think when I was sticking my foot in the tow loop, I kicked it and rotated it.
Nick, they, Nick Haig, they're having some trouble with the ingress aid that's used to help him get into the uh, foot restraint that he's working on so that he can access the site that the crew members are going to install the old battery in for storage. Team here on the ground is asking him to get a little bit more, uh, or had asked him for a better look, and he's going to try and reinstall it. So we'll see if uh, if that works and uh, whether or not he'll he'll be able to use it to get into the foot restraint as planned. And uh, Christina, how are you doing with that battery? Doing well. It's uh, stable and unstable. Maybe bye. Okay, sounds good. And uh, you guys were coming up on a night pass. We're a bit more than one minute ahead of uh, 20 seconds LOS. Okay. Uh, back with us. Five seconds from the handover, Nick. The 20 seconds. Five seconds from the handover, Nick. Okay, it's installed. Good news from Nick Egg there. Uh, just before we have a, had a handover of satellites, and uh, we'll last just for a moment until we get uh, get the crew back on uh, on audio and video. Um, sounds like he did get that uh, ingress aid installed again. That's pretty. Okay, Tamar, you back with us? Uh, yes, sir. I just came back with you guys. The last we've heard is it's installed and everybody rejoiced. Capcom Thomas, Tomah Pesquet there, uh, talking with the crew members and uh, sitting next to him, Tracy Caldwell Dyson, who's been uh, the Capcom getting the crew members ready for their spacewalk and then talking with the other crew members, not spacewalking, uh, for anything they need today. And of course, our flight director, Mary Lawrence, sitting next to her in the white jacket. You guys are comfortable with me taking the red off the ingress aid, I assume. Yes, Nick, uh, that's a firm. And again, good news from uh, Nick Haig on that ingress aid that had come uh, off of the foot restraint that it's meant to help him get into. He's got it reinstalled and uh, moving on with the with the work.
while Haig continues to work on getting into that foot restraint so that they can get the old battery moved. Uh, we'll take a couple more social media questions. We've got uh, one here from uh, Michelle asking if the astronauts' tools are attached to their suits or toolbox, and the answer is they are attached to anything uh, and everything uh, uh, that will keep them from floating away uh, during a spacewalk. Uh, if the astronauts are, are using them, they'll, they'll keep them attached um, with, a, with a tether, and if they're in their toolbox, they're still attached with a tether, so they're tethered really at all times to keep them from floating away. Battery away from the IA a little bit, so towards your right shoulder. Clear, Looks good for us. I have to kick my off pedal. I'm going to hit it and bring myself back now. Leave that to it. Yep, there you go. Okay, I guess we've got one heel to do. Checking to make sure I'm got good, decent alignment. I think I do. Okay. Like these settings, I'll put the other heel on. Right, I've got anchor seats coming back. All right. That's the H1 seat that's near you. Copy, Nick. The singer said is told you guys will have to perform a red swap on that battery before you transfer. Okay. I, I have the battery. Okay, yes. I got a red on. Stand by one. Let me unread it. Okay. Okay. Oh, you're. I'm coming in, watching the cable. Help me turn that away. It looks like it wants to go under the battery. Yep. And I just need to, if you have control over it, I'm going to take a break and adjust my CCD. Yep. Get in good position. I can hold it here for a while. Happy. Use it. You can see the battery on the move. Well. Cook handed it back to uh, Haig so that she can now get into place for the installation of this old nickel hydrogen battery on an adapter plate that they previously installed so that they can uh, it can uh, stay on on space station since there's not room for all of the old batteries on the exposed pallet that will be used to get rid of them and um, just so that we reset and everybody's on the same page uh, once once the TCV is adjusted on uh, Christina and take as much time as you need for that uh, we're gonna soft dock that battery onto AP Echo, and uh, just to make sure those blind mate connectors should be oriented ISS outboard. Copy that. I've got good orientation, holding position. Okay, my TC is adjusted, and I'm okay. ready to Christina, get I think if, if you go head toward me, mm -hmm. then I think you'll be able to use the uh, scoop on slot three. Okay. to reach down in there and pin the cable out from underneath, and that should put you in a good position to see the blind mate connectors. Okay. your feet that way. I'm clear. Okay, I am going to reconfigure my BRT to okay. translate down to you. Okay. I'm 
Gonna watch your legs uh, take each other's stuff in between them. Okay, copy. Now three hours into today's spacewalk, scheduled to last about six and a half hours. The crew members are making good time, though. The battery and uh, old nickel hydrogen battery move has uh, has slowed them down just a little bit, but they're still doing good. Um, this is basically one of four steps in the battery work that they're doing, installing two adapter plates, then relocating this battery and then there will be one more adapter plate to install after this. After that, they'll just have get aheads. I'm on the skip. Right. And you, want to, you want to swing your feet up and away from structure and then rotate your feet away from me and your safety tether just goes right in front of you. Looks nice. Okay, perfect. It's out of the corridor and cables out of the corridor. It's a lot to move this thing, okay. really. Yep. I'm going to hold on to this table a little longer okay. and ensure that it stays somewhere. And then I'll start to get on an H2. Okay, come with you a little bit. Yep, okay. inboard. And tilt the uh, back end down. And I'll push it up at all. Here, let me uh, walk out my red real quick. Okay. okay. I don't want to fight that. Okay. And then what you're looking to do is the end that's by your foot, towards your feet, bring that one down and the top up. Okay. As long as my mini workstation is there, isn't preventing that. But, yeah, just try to do that motion. Bottom of it down. It's still a little off. There we go. Looking. You're over the cone on this side. Stand on the H2 side. My heel popped out. Okay, copy. I've got a finger on the H2 side. Oh, I see something pulled in. There we go, cable. Okay, I'm going to go. Can you hold the battery just a finger yeah. on it? Yeah, got a finger on it. Yeah, i got to line up too. I got no heels in. Stand by. All right, I got it. The toe clip on your right, just get in and out. In the right spot, just have to get that big turn in with the heel. A huge turn. Yep. Okay, turn it down. Okay. 
Possible to bend your knees more, that could help. And then also your mini workstation is contacting this, this yeah. is I think that's preventing some of your motion. down here and adjust the pitch setting. Okay. I'm, I'm leaning too far in and the and battery's watch, too tall. Watch your lockout right on the scoop. Don't, yeah. don't put any force into the battery. Now that red string is on the end of the ingress tape. Yeah, I see it. And Nick, your roll is supposed to be foxtrot, but really you can adjust it uh, as long as it's comfortable for you and it points towards the right direction. Nick, watch the ingress aid end with the red. Yeah, I see it. Yeah. Nick Hague adjusting his uh, foot restraint again, trying to get a better angle on uh, getting this battery installed on the adapter plate that they put in earlier in the spacewalk. Tell me they're not facing IEA like I would expect. Yeah, it's going to put me over, primarily over H1. But it seems like you're the front of your body would be facing outboard instead of the IEA. This would be off. I squeezed the maneuver a little. Let me get my left left hand and then I'll okay. work on the off. Uh, Hey Nick, just to uh, just to be on the same page, we understand that you uh, you want to uh, reconfigure the APFR because you have contact between your DCM and the uh, work site. So um, we thought you were going to pitch it back some, but actually you're rolling it some. Is that correct? Yeah, I rolled it some to get to the side of the battery. Copy. I really bend that D and then your heels. Right there, isn't it? Yep, you're right on top of it. You're in the right place. You just have to bend to do in and then out. Yeah, man. Yep, nice. Okay. Let's try this again. I'll lock out some slack. Hey, Christina and Nick, um, we're following along on your work. Good work, you guys. We're still 10 minutes ahead of the timeline at that point. And the next step for you guys is to uh, receive that battery uh, from Christina and Nick. Um, and if the connectors are oriented ISS outboard, attempt to soft dock that battery onto an AP echo. 
And Nick, once you copy that term out, Nick, once you have control, uh -huh. I'm going to remove or I'm going to make sure the cable is out from under it. Okay, I've got it. Okay, you have it? Yep. The table is under it. One second. Let me pull it back a little. Nope. Oh. Got it. It's out. Now it goes with that side. Okay. You push in from that side? Yep. And um, Nick, if you haven't That's done so, lot. you can uh, lock out your red as well and leave some slack. Yep, red's locked out. I can see that the H1 is lined over the cone. This is lined over the cone. I mean, this is the feel like soft back to you? Feels like it's not going to go any further. Can you react against one of the uh, guides to... Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm really yeah. pulling it in and... So it's not, I think we're in soft dock. <laughs> hey, awesome job, you guys. Uh, so next we'll attempt to drive those bolts. We'll go to H2 first, and that's going to be with your PGT, Nick, on your swing arm and app settings. Ready for settings. Your settings are going to be Alpha 7. Clockwise two. Okay. Get out of your way. You over here? It's all the way down. If I hold it like this. Come on, I got one line flush out to seven. Clockwise Copy. two. Those are good settings. Uh, one line flush to the H2 scoop. You are go to drive H2. Uh, we expect around 16 turns. Copy, 16 turns. Hey, now in a good position to get started on a installing this battery in its new uh, storage location on top of the adapter plate that the crew installed earlier in the spacewalk. that will take uh, first uh, driving this this bolt uh, that he's working on now. Let it dampen it a little bit on this side. will be two bolts uh, in all that he'll be working on to get this battery stored on the adapter plate. I'm pausing. I need a slightly better grip. Can you okay. pull the trigger from there? I can stabilize. Okay. Yep. Can it continue county turn? Yep. Okay. Starting. One. Hold it like that. I think I can stabilize a little. Okay. Ready? Yeah. Okay. Let's put it. Uh. You see the lock indicator there? I've got 16 turns, 9.1, good green light. Come on. With the lock indicator? It's indicating locked. Yep, and a uh, lock indicator is showing locked. A uh, couple of you guys, 9.1 torque, uh, 16 turns, good green light, status indicator is lock. You can move on to H1. Uh, same here, socket tape line flush to the scoop, and we will expect around five turns on that H1. Copy. And work. One bolt down and one to go on this uh, uh, nickel hydrogen battery storage. Getting it out of uh, the slot that it was in opens that slot up for the final adapter plate that the crew will install coming up next on their task list. Seven, clockwise two, set. Good numbers. Line of tape is flush. 
Return. You are go to drive to talk. Tama, four and a half turns, 9.3 actual torque with green light. Copy, Nick, uh, 4.5 turns, 9.3 torque, good green light. Well done there. Can you uh, put uh, an eye on the status indicator for us? Yep, it work. Indicator showing unlocked, I'm sorry, locked. Indicator showing locked. We copy, uh, Nick, indicator showing lock. Uh, good job, this battery is installed. You can store your PGT on your swing arm, release the red from the battery and unlock, uh, and egress the APFR. Okay, good work. And Tomas, I believe this is where I am able to translate back, but I am ready for next bit. step. And Christina, uh, you are go to translate back to the EP. Uh, Nick, after you're out of this APFR, you'll have to relocate it. Uh, at any point, feel free to take a minute or two and catch your breath before we move on. Catch your breath before we move on. Copy all. And I copy, I'm heading back to the EP. Copy, Christina, and you'll have your, uh, you still have your green hook on the nadir handrail of the CETA card. So when the second of those two bolts installed, they've got the uh, old nickel hydrogen battery now installed on the new adapter plate, which offers a storage location for the ones we can't uh, send away from the space station. Now Christina Cook's back on her way to the exposed platform where the final adapter plate is waiting for them. Uh, Nick Hague, meanwhile, is uh, adjusting his uh, foot tether. Uh, foot restraint, rather, um, and uh, then they will be moving on to the next task, which is in, which is uh, installing that uh, final adapter plate in the space left open by the battery that they just relocated. Uh, it was a roll of echo. Uh, it was a roll of echo. Passing the side. I'm back with the green hook, heading to the APFR bridge. Copy, Christina, you are go to uh, translate on the bridge up to the EP, and same cautions and warnings as before apply. Don't watch your translation rates on the EP. Copy. While Christina Cook is making her way back to the external platform and Nick Haig is getting uh, the foot restraint uh, adjusted, uh, we'll take some more social media questions. The first one we have is coming from Kelly, who is asking, what are the astronauts inside the space station doing to support the spacewalk? Uh, Anne McLean and uh, David Saint-Jacques um, on the U.S. side of the space station don't have any 
official duties on their schedule at the moment, but they are keeping a close eye on the spacewalk, uh, watching as their crewmates go through their task and uh, sending out uh, any input they get as they are, are seeing views through the windows, um, angles that we might not have here on the ground. And of course, they were instrumental in getting the crew members out the door, helping them get into their spacesuit, which you can't do alone, and they'll be back in the airlock waiting for them when uh, Christina Cook and Nick Haig return to the airlock at the end of today's spacewalk. Echo 12 and good pull twist test, black on black. Uh, with that, you can follow Christina to the EP, and uh, you'll meet up with her uh, on top of the EP. And uh, that call from Thomas Pesquet letting uh, Haig know that he can now uh, make his way to the external exposed platform where uh, pallet where uh, Christina Cook is already waiting, ready to get the new uh, adapter plate and move it back to the uh, integrated electronics assembly where they've been installing the plates all morning. Her next question comes from uh, Thought for Teacher, who is asking, when did these astronauts leave Earth to go to space? And that and, uh, one, uh, Christina, that uh, specific question is coming from Evan, who's in the fifth grade. Uh, EVA, um, minutes, Christina uh, Cook and uh, Nick Haig actually uh, launched from uh, the uh, Earth uh, just a few weeks ago, uh, earlier this uh, month. Uh, they uh, arrived uh, at the space uh, station uh, on March 14th, uh, and uh, so they got a uh, running start on their uh, long stay in space with these uh, three spacewalks in a series that uh, we're working our way through at the moment. Ms. Thompson asked, does every person that goes to space get to do a spacewalk? And the answer to that is no, these guys are lucky. Um, all four of the crew members on the U.S. side, that's uh, Cook, Haig, Anne McLean, and David Saint-Jacques, who is a Canadian Space Agency astronaut, are all scheduled to do spacewalks. Uh, Christina, and, hey, uh, Christina Cook and Nick Haig, of course, are out right now. And McLean was out with Haig last week, and then uh, she will join Saint-Jacques uh, when they go out on April 8th. And uh, we've got a question from Elena asking, did they do this same uh, spacewalk in the big pool previously? Uh, that is, uh, the big pool is our neutral buoyancy laboratory, which is here in Houston, just down the road from the Johnson Space Center and is key to the training that the astronauts do on the ground to get ready for spacewalks. And the answer is yes, that uh, Nick Haig and Christina Cook actually did this uh, spacewalk in training together in the pool not long before they launched. So they've got some good practice under their belts and as you can see, they're doing a great job today getting these uh, adapter plates installed so that we can keep up the work to upgrade the space stations. Uh, batteries, which store the electricity generated by the solar arrays. And uh, Nick, Christina, we're three minutes from sunrise. Okay, three minutes from sunrise. I'm at the EP bridge. Copy, Nick. Nick. Cal pass to the Cal pass, good LED. Uh, copy, Nick, Christina. Christina. 
other side. Yep. Then right. I'll, I'll be able to come up and okay. flank, we'll flank it. Flank it and work. It's looking good. Happy. Hey, I am on the inboard side. You are go to come up. I'm in position. I'm on the bridge coming your way. Happy. Get a chance. Peek over your right shoulder. Do you hear Christina Cook getting into place for the uh, removal of the next and final for the spacewalk uh, adapter plate from the exposed pallet that it came to the space station on? And there is Nick Haig moving into view. You can see the red stripes on his, on the legs of his spacesuit. He'll be joining uh, Cook at this work site so that they can work together to remove the adapter plate and then uh, get it back over to the P4 truss and the integrated electric electrical assembly where it'll be installed. Right in front of me. Just under three and a half hours into today's spacewalk, which is scheduled to last six and a half hours. Okay, you guys, next step is for uh, Christina to transfer the PGT to Nick. And uh, Nick, once you're in position for AP Delta H1 release, I'll have settings for you. And I am, while well, he's setting up, I'm actually ended up in a really good position for H1 on Delta, if you want me to put that in work. Got Alpha 7, Two sets. Right over it. I've got a red on it. And mine flush. Okay, we copy Alpha 7, counter 2, and uh, one line flush on Delta H1. Confirm. Confirm. All right, you are one going to flush. release eight turns. Just like the previous adapter plates, it'll take two bolts to release this one from the exposed pallet. And Nick Hang's getting started on releasing the first of those bolts. It released at six turns. I had two lines visible and it skipped on the thread. Copy it, release at six turns, two lines visible. You can uh, move on to Delta H2, uh, same settings, and confirm one line flush. So correction to what I said, Christina Cook actually releasing that bolt, now she's handing the pistol grip tool off to Nick Haig to release the second one. Correct, you are go to release uh, H2 on Delta. We expect 19 turns, one nine. Good at and work. Put a finger on that. It feels like it yeah. feels like a little high running towards. Uh, it's starting to loosen up a little. It's your safety tether coming. Come by. Okay. Keep your position. Yep, I got a finger on the H1. Great. Turn. Okay. 
free? Yeah. Hey. Okay. Take a look. Yeah, out. Going back to the bag. Hey, right, BRT ready. Uh, Nick, can you say again how many turns you've had on that? Proofs are floating in space. It was 16 turns. Copy 16. And uh, Christina, you go to turn that PGT off uh, and to bundle it. To Great view here of both the spacewalkers together at the exposed pallet, working to get that uh, last adapter plate removed so that they can get it over to the P4 truss and installed. And, and then it loosened up after a while, and then it was normal. I just now noticed some flakes of metal coming out of the H2 socket. Copy, Nick. It's a good observation. Stand by one. And Nick would like to confirm with you where the flakes are coming from, from the top of the adapter plate or underneath the, that stanchion, that post? It fits the top of the adapter plate. Copy, thanks. Hey, Nick, I'm told it's actually better if it comes from the top <laughs> for lots of reasons that I won't explain. <laughs> but, um, but you are go to uh, retrieve this AP Delta, stow it on your BRT. Okay, and work. And Nick, I've got some control over it, so let me know if you need anything in terms of direction. Okay. Nick Haig reporting that he'd seen some metal flakes floating away as uh, he was uh, releasing the, the adapter plate. Um, the team on the ground talking about what that might have come from and, and whether it's an issue, but they think he's, he's good to go ahead and, and begin moving it over to the new installation spot. Team on the ground uh, thinks it, it does matter to them where those flags uh, might be coming from. Anywhere, uh, would like an, ex an inspection of that slot, uh, Delta. H2 fitting looks clean. Looking straight down it. I don't know if you can see in WVS. Yes, we do have a good WVS of view of H2, uh, Nick. H2 uh, Nick. Okay. I'll lean over for each one. It looks clean as well. As I was saying, the uh, team here on the ground agreed that it doesn't matter where the flakes might have come from, so having the crew take a look and do an inspection of the area. Man, I'm going to get out of your way. All right. Okay. And uh, Nick, with that AP Delta on your BRT, you can translate back to P4. With 13, you're going to lead that translation. Take them off. Write them down now. Copy. And uh, whenever it's convenient, probably more when you get to the AA, we'll also take an inspection uh, of the, the adapter plate. Nick is I'm on, on the, the agent. Yep. I'm going to go ahead and start translating. Okay. I'm 
translating to the crew outside. And uh, back with you from a really short handover. Uh, Christina, next step for you is going to be to perform the crew log back to uh, inventory and stand by just one minute for that. And I am just now getting to the crew last night, so I'll also do the previous step of the PG uh, powering. Copy, you're powering off the PGT and bundling to the crew log bag. I think I'd like to do the inventory before I bundle it so that once it's bundled, it can stay attached. Let's sit down tomorrow. Copy, Nick, and I'll remind you to check your gauntlets, as always, as you're crossing the Sarge. Uh, and Christina, you are go to perform this inventory with the PGT not yet bundled. Well, I will remind you to bundle it at the end. Copy. It's off. Inventory. The socket caddy. Okay. On an integrated vet, six inch wobble. I have a GoPro. It is to a D ring with a mission. I have a rocket wrench with a nine inch check and two reps. Let's go look at the guest spinner. I have three sets of gap spinners. One is in a small AVA trash bag. Small AVA trash bag goes to a rep. And um, gap spinner goes to an integrated rep. Another gap spinner goes to an, the other two go to integrated rep. Also a wire tie holding the gap spinners together. I mentioned the two reps on the ratchet wrench going to the outside. The bag external has a large small adjustable. A RET series to the PGT and a single RET as well on the external, and one wire tie for bundling the PGT. That's it. So I like two. And uh, Christina, that's a good inventory for Kulak Bag 2. We want to let you know that uh, we consider your CO2 sensor has failed. Uh, so we'll go to press on, not an issue, but you are prime for uh, CO2 symptoms. Copy. I dropped my green hook at 5109 again. Copy, uh, Nick, 5109 for your green hook. And one go back, Christina, we consider it failed, but it actually isn't. It's just suspect right now, but we want to consider it failed for all purposes. Understand. Yes. And Christina, on your way down from the from the EP bridge, uh, you'll have to retract and fold that ingress aid uh, down to the boot plate. Copy. And then you'll have to pick up your green hook on your on your way to P4. Okay, sounds good. Currently bundling the PG. The APFR Copy, Nick. Uh, you can ingress this APFR. One more ingress for today, uh, and stow the ingress aid once it's done. Copy and work.
Nick Eggs made his way back to the P4 truss where the integrated electrical assembly is. They'll be installing this last uh, adapter plate. Christina Cook will be following him. She's been doing an inventory of the, the tools, make sure none are missing. And also getting a call from the ground to let her know that there's a failed or possibly failed a CO2 sensor, sensor that keeps track of the carbon dioxide level in her spacesuit. So she is going to be, or the team here on the ground is going to be depending on her to, to monitor whether or not she has any symptoms that CO2 might be rising. All good so far, though, so they're going ahead uh, as planned with, with the next task, which, again, is the installation of that final adapter plate. And uh, the crew's still doing really good on time. They're three hours and 41 minutes into today's spacewalk and uh, about 10 minutes ahead of, of schedule at this point. Uh, if you could make sure your WVS is on. Okay. You come on in the APFR. All right, Nick, well done. Uh, so last one for today, I think. And you can stow the Ingersade, uh, check your tethers are clear, and inspect uh, the IA interfaces and the blind mate connectors. Okay, Ingersade is folded back towards me. Tethers are clear. Blind mate connectors are free of thawed. Be my band. Interface looks clean. Okay, Nick, that's awesome. Uh, next step is for you to soft dog this AP Delta. You can uh, try that now, or you can wait for Christina. You're going to have to wait for her anyway in a few steps. Okay, I'll just wait. I think it'll help with the alignment. Sounds good. Sounds good. Great. Mayor on the bundling. Great bundling plan. Copy, Christina. And uh, Nick, uh, just a reminder, we will we'll take also, if you're in a position to do this, you can wait for Christina as well, no rush, but if you're in a position to do this, we'd like you to inspect uh, the backside of the AP. Sure, good work. Capcom to Montpesquet, they're asking for an inspection of the back side of the adapter plate before they uh, begin installing it so that uh, they can keep gathering information on where the metal flakes that the crew saw might have come from. And uh, Christina, I don't know if you tried to recover your WVS, but we're still not getting it here on the ground. Okay. Yep, just finish the bundling freehand. Go in for it now. Confirm a green LED. Copy. And uh, now we see it. On the back side of the AP, you look good. Ends are good. Good EMI bands. Everything looks clean on the back side of the AP. And copy, we see you inspecting those interfaces. Anything wrong with the bolt interfaces on the on the AP? I was looking at the uh, the H2, other than just seeing some uh, maybe a little bit of wear. I don't see any debris on the uh, bolt. It's a dry lube that's rubbed a little. Copy the dry lube is rubbed a little. We we didn't copy the first half of your message. You got garbled a little bit, so if you could say that again. Yeah, copy. The uh, bolt looks 
clean, no debris. Uh, just uh, I mentioned that the looks like there's a little bit of the dry loop that uh, is worn off the first couple of threads. Okay, thanks a lot for that, Nick, and uh, it sounds good to us, so we can press on. Everything looking good with that inspection that Tag was doing on the adapter plate. So he's got the go ahead to begin installing it. He, again, just like with the others, will be uh, driving two bolts to secure it in place. And then there will be a series of three clamps to release before they can connect the uh, cable from the adapter plate to one of the new batteries that was installed previously by the space station's robotic arm. Dark Copy, Nick. Good job. You're becoming really fluent with those APs. That just makes perfect. Nice job. Well, I was able to reach the uh, PGT with a hex driver. Copy. So you can uh, retrieve that PGT. Uh, did you lock out your RET on the EPI Delta? I'm not sure, and you can retrieve that PGT, and I'll have settings for you. Copy. The RET is locked out to the adapter plate. I'm ready for settings. Okay, Nick, your settings for this um, uh, standby one. Yeah, your settings are going to be Alpha 7, clockwise 2. Alpha 7, clockwise 2, copy, we're set. Okay, stand by one, Nick. Stand by. And I am at the APFR bridge. Copy, you'll have to retract this Ingress aid and uh, pick up your green hook on your way to P4. And uh, Nick, you're in a good position right now. I would like you to wait for Christina for the install for possible side loading. Um, so you have a couple minutes for yourself. Waiting. Views of both spacewalkers here. Nick Haig uh, waiting at the integrated electric uh, assembly on the P4 truss segment while Christina Cook makes her way back there, having done some cleanup at the uh, exposed pallet that the uh, adapter plate they're installing came from. Right now, uh, and you'll pick it up when you come back to recouple the seat of cars. That's really your choice, but you can you can leave it where it is. Okay, copy. I'll leave it for now. I'll pick it up when I come back for the final time. Okay, that sounds good. And uh, can you confirm for me that you have your gauntlets in place before you cross this arch? We'll confirm that when I get there. Copy. Thank you. Fade is locked. It's stay position. And hold it. Uh, copy, Christina. That's, uh, that looks good to us. And you can stow your crew log bag, too, on that APFR bridge.
And uh, Nick, since you're there and you have the camera in hand, we wouldn't mind pictures of the stanchions of the AP if you haven't already done so. Just another reminder that you can keep asking your questions on social media using the hashtag AskNASA. And while we have a quiet second as uh, Christina Cook moves back towards the P4 truss, we'll take a few more of those questions. First one's coming from Sian, who is asking, are the tools the astronauts use on the space walk, I think, uh, used inside as well, or, is, or are they specifically made uh, for use in space? Um, the, the tools they, use, they are using are um, often specifically made for use in space. They're not exclusively, um, and often they are made specifically for t use on spacewalk out in the vacuum of space. That uh, that makes them a little more complicated than some of the tools we use on the ground. That said, uh, sometimes the crew members do take things that they have inside the space station and cobble them together for uh, tools that are needed for unexpected tasks. In fact, they did a little bit of that on the previous spacewalk when they wanted to remove some debris from uh, from a, a docking, a, a berthing uh, mechanism. Um, they had some tape that they uh, attached to the end of a, of, a, of a rod that they could use to uh, either, or uh, attached to the end of a scraper that uh, they could use to either um, pick up the debris using the tape or if it didn't come up that way, uh, scrape it off using the scraper. Uh, Robert is asking, are there enough spacesuits for each astronaut in case of an emergency? Um, there are enough spacesuits that everybody has uh, has spacesuits that uh, fit them on the space station. Uh, that said, in an emergency, the astronauts would probably be getting into their Soyuz to come back home if needed, um, rather than going on a spacewalk. There are, you could have an emergency that requires a spacewalk, but not everybody would go outside for the spacewalk. Uh, just just two people is, is usually what we uh, send out for spacewalks. So you really would probably only need two spacesuits in the event of a spacewalking emergency, but there, there are spacewalks for for all the crew members, or space, uh, space suits that will work for all the crew members. And Ty is asking, will there be more spacewalks later this year? We don't have any specifically scheduled yet, but I believe that we can probably expect to see some more spacewalks over the course of the year, so definitely stay tuned and we will let you know as they are scheduled. Correction to that, we do have one spacewalk already scheduled. We've got a series of three that we're in the middle of, and uh, you definitely do want to tune back in on April 8th uh, to, to see the last of the series of three. Beyond that, uh, there probably will be some more scheduled this year, but uh, you'll, have to, you'll have to stay tuned to find out for sure. That must be a great view. Hard to describe. I'm not sure I know the words. I sure wish everybody on the team down there got to see it. Yeah, we get a view of you, so that's even better. <laughs> I'm not sure about that. And I'm about to cross the charge and my gauntlets are down. You are go. Christina Cook still making her way over to the work site on the P4 truss segment. Great view here coming from a camera set up inside the International Space Station looking out at them. Uh, this uh, fr coming from the, the crew who's been keeping up with the spacewalk inside. All right, Nick, I'm you can see Christina arriving at the work site now, joining Nick Hang, who's already there and, and waiting for her to help with the installation of the final adapter plate. 
We've got one more question while she uh, continues to get into place. This one coming from Cynthia, who's asking on behalf of Miss Maisel's fourth grade class, how long do astronauts have to train to become astronauts? We actually have some astronaut candidates, which is what you're called when you're in training, uh, training right now. That takes about two years, but after that, you've still got a little bit of a wait while you um, are in line to get assigned to a mission to go to space. And then once you are assigned, you've got some more training. So there's a lot of uh, a lot of work involved in becoming an astronaut, but I think most of them would tell you it's worth it. I just want to confirm my settings again. I've got Alpha 7 clockwise 2 set. Nick, that is correct, Alpha 7, clockwise 2, and uh, Christina, a reminder for you, you should translate outboard uh, of the IEA, and on the other side of that keel, uh, be mindful of the BGA and try not to kick it. Okay, copy. And uh, Nick, we're going for H2, right? One line flush on H2. I've got one line flush on H2, just waiting for man to get into a good position. All right. Does it work? You want to come around the keel? Yeah, let me come around. Yeah, there's a lot more room over there. Over there earlier. Good call. And Christina, your safety tether is, in, is routed around your back at that point. I'll do a little. Actually, between your legs. Towards it. Oh, yeah. How's that? Just right over your right heel. And there you go. Hold on. Come on, we're in a good position. I'm one line flush to H2, ready to drive. Copy, one line flush to H2, Alpha 7, clockwise 2. We expect 16, 17 turns. You have a go. Happy go. I torqued out. Half a turn. Yeah, let's stand by one. I'll get a better finger on it. Seems like it's pushing out away from the plate a little bit. Okay, getting started on the first of the two bolts that he needs to drive, uh, or that he uh, he and Christina Cook need to drive before the uh, adapter plate will be installed. Jacking. Good. I got 9.1 on the torque, 17 turns, good green light. Copy 9.1 on the torque, 17, good green light. You can move on to uh, H1, and uh, remember we expect interference with the IEA wall. Hey, on and H1, I've got two lines showing, one of them's flush. Copy, and your settings are the same, alpha 7, clockwise 2, uh, two lines, one flush. 
we expect uh, about five turns, you are go to drive to torque. Okay, so do you want to brace the, if you hold the end of it? The, uh, the the tip? Yeah, there. Yep, That's got perfect. it. Starting turn. Get them off. Six turns. 9.4 on the torque. Two green light. Copy, Nick, six turns, 9.4, and good green light. That is a successful install of that AP Delta. You can now transfer that PGT um, back to Christina when she's in a position, or you can stow it back yourself on the crew log bag one. Release that red that you have on the AP and unlock. See that? back to crew bag, working on the red. Copy, and after you've done so, uh, you're go to release those three TA clamps on the AP. And come on, do I have a go to release the connector cap? You do, Christina. Copy. And Christina, this cap, this specific one, we're keeping it on you uh, for the four alpha side. Okay, so to it, keep it. That's correct. And Nick, on, once you've the released the, open. the, you're reading my mind. You can demate this, uh, the AP connector P4 from the AP Delta J4. With those bolts uh, driven in uh, properly, the adapter plate's installed in its spot, and now uh, Nick Hague's getting ready to connect nice the cable can, uh, with uh, Christina Cook's help to the... Once you've made all the good checks, or you can transfer it to Christina if you need our help. Getting ready to, uh, to connect that cable to the new lithium-ion battery that it'll help integrate with the station's electro electronic system. You also heard... Uh, Capcom, Tomal Pesquet, the, uh, the asking Christina Cook to hold on to one of the connector caps. Uh, okay. Those, the other caps have been used to plug up the uh, the dummy spot, basically on the adapter plate where the cable had been connected for uh, for launch. But this one they're going to use as they go out uh, to get the uh, the battery that will be replacing the lithium-ion battery that we'll be replacing with old nickel-hydrogen batteries. Uh, they'll be using that cap for that uh, for that forward work, getting ready for the robotics to replace that. Christina, if you can reach this while you're close. Stop this BRT, and I will yeah. have it for you. Get this out right now. Boom. I'm ready. Got it. Hold open. Yeah, working. Okay. Coming to you. Yeah, okay, I got it. I see no five, no button tens. On the connector side of J4. Okay. 
Copy, Christina. That's good. Checks. You are go to connect that P4 to the J4 lithium ion battery in slot one. Okay, how we don't need to worry too much about them here. View for cons from Christina Cook's helmet camera as she gets ready to uh, connect that last cable for the final adapter plate, connecting it to one of the new lithium ion batteries. And it is made it over center. Copy, good job, you guys. And uh, Nick, you haven't done so, you can close those uh, three TA clamps. Uh, and after that, egress okay, the AKR. Copy. Copy that. Good now. Come off. Uh, I'd also be ready for next step. And copy, Christina. And uh, your next step for now is going to be to give me a glove inspection and hab check. <laughs> copy. That last adapter plate, adapter plate D, now installed at the elect integrated electronics assembly. The APFR, your next steps are going to be to stow the Ingress aid and fold it to the APFR boot plate. And for easy two, no changes on the glove, do I have? Hagen Cook will have a little cleanup work to do around this task before they move on to their next set of tasks. For Christina, that's some get-aheads for future battery swap-outs, while uh, Nick will be moving uh, to the to the site that he and Ann McLean worked at last week uh, to get to make some preparations for the swap of one of the new batteries that uh, has experienced a problem with uh, the old batteries we'll use to replace it for now. Come off. I've got the ingress aid folded. I've got uh, no change to the gloves. Where I have. Okay, sounds good, Nick. Thanks for that. And uh, next big picture item is doing some cleanup here on uh, P4. And for you, Nick, uh, it's going to start by retrieving the scoops, square scoops, and store them in crew dog bag one. You can keep one on yourself to go. Oh no, put three of them in your crew dog bag one. And for you, Christina, your cleanup steps are going to happen on uh, the EP, close to the EP. We want you to recouple those CEDA cards, uh, and you're going to have to translate back to the APFR bridge. Okay, good work. And then I'll let you back out, and then I'll come in behind to clean up the crew lock card. Sounds good. And for you guys' awareness, we're still 10 minutes ahead at that point. Um, we want Christina to go back, clean up on P1 and the CEDA cards, and then Nick do all the cleanup on P4. Then you'll meet up and uh, go to the 2-alpha ISS Zenith side to do the 4-alpha, uh, sorry, 4-alpha deconfig. Copy. Copy. Bit of a change in plans there to what I said a moment ago. Uh, Christina Cook will be joining Nick Hague on the work uh, for the swap out of the battery that experienced a problem after it was installed on the last spacewalk. They'll be working on that together, getting some things ready so that uh, the space station's robotic arm, controlled by teams here on the ground, can actually perform the swap out uh, next over the course of the next week before the final spacewalk in this series on April 8th.
Passing the side start, let's go. Copy, Christina. Tomorrow I'm at my green hook. I'm going to pick it up unless you uh, recommend otherwise. Uh, you can pick it up now, uh, Nick. It's not an issue. And uh, your next steps, yeah, they're going to be to retrieve those three square scoops and stow them in a crew lock bag one. Okay. And, Christina, for you, once you're at the APFR bridge, uh, your first step is to configure APFR in a low profile and uh, report the settings. Copy. I am there, and I'll put that to work. Sounds good. And uh, you guys, more good news. Uh, we have a good initial checkout on that last battery that you've connected the AP next to. That's uh, great news. Hey, tomorrow I've got my green hook. Send over to clean up screw up bag. Copy, Nick. Come on, before I grab these scoops, big picture, uh, what's going in the bag, what's staying out of the bag. I've got a uh, ratchet uh, with the six-inch wobble that's on the outside, and I've got the PGT on the outside. Everything else is on the inside. And uh, Nick, if you depends if you're comfortable carrying the bag like that. It can stay like this, or you can put everything inside, but the PGT if you think that's going to make it more comfortable for the translation. But we're taking the whole thing over to the four alpha side. Okay, copy. I'll wrap it all up. And um, we yeah. also have to do a um, socket swap or to remove the hex driver from that PGT and still on the socket caddy before you close up that crew lock bag. Okay, great. We'll do. Come on, I'm ready with APFR setting. We're listening. Talking is six. Romeo, Romeo. That's trot. I copied six Romeo Romeo Foxtrot six. Okay, and uh, I think you've already done so, but you can make sure that the ingress aid is folded as much as possible. Uh, and after that, you can retrieve your green hook from the port uh, the cart nadir handrail before we start moving the the cart. Okay. 
This view again coming from inside the space station provided us to, provided to us by the, the crew inside who's been uh, keeping up with the activities going on on the exterior. Break must have been released inadvertently. Cook and Hanger doing some cleanup work uh, following the final installation of the last uh, adapter plate needed to finish up the switch out of the new lithium ion batteries. Christina, you're, you're saying the SIDA card is moving quite a bit? Confirm. The brake must have already been released. Yeah, okay, that's not, not a huge deal. Uh, we'll have to move it anyway, but you can retrieve your green hook and your next step is going to be anyway to release the port SIDA card brakes and then uh, to recouple that port SIDA card. Christina Cook's been working to uh, take apart the bridge she created from uh, one work site to the other earlier today and having uh, achieved that, she's now getting the CETA cart, the uh, crew equipment translation aid cart that's used to move big pieces of equipment up and down the space station's truss uh, back into configuration so that it can, uh, can be moved again following the spacewalk. Meanwhile, Nick Haig has been working to uh, take up the the scoops that were used to help them move the old nickel hydrogen battery into its stowage location and uh, then also getting um, some tools into their crew, uh, uh, their, their toolbox basically, and uh, moving out uh, to their next work site, uh, which will be back where he and Ann McLean worked last week, looking at a battery that uh, hasn't been able to charge that they will be replacing robotically over the course of the next week. Uh, we're just back with you from a 20 seconds handover. So can you say again, uh, Christina? Okay. Can you say again, uh, Christina? Yep. Ma, I still have my green hook on the, the cart, and as a result, it's tending back. So it's starting to just slowly and gently move starboard as I would want it to. If you concur, I'll just leave my green hook on it, let it tend back. I confirmed it's in capture and the energy is over is suspended. And Christina, we copy, as long as you're sure that uh, your safety test line is out of the way and you have a good way to control that CETA cart and guide it with your hand, and then you're good to go. Copy. That's work. Tama, I have uh, released the three scoops. I'm over the top of the crew lock bag. You mentioned the socket swap. I have a socket caddy in here with a two-inch rigid. Okay, uh, Nick, the step is going to be to remove the hex driver from the IEA PGT that's on that bag and to stow on that socket caddy. It's not technically a swap. You just have to remove that socket from the PGT. Copy all. and work. Tama, I have the CETA cart in capture or, or captured by the mechanism. I'll go ahead and turn it to lock if you can. And uh, Christina, we need those brake handles to face away from the from face one, not parallel to face one, but away from face one, 90 degrees. And Nick, once you've uh, taken off that nine inch hex driver from the PGT and uh, you've stowed it securely on the socket caddy, you can put that socket caddy back in the bag and then you'll stow that PGT at P4 handrail 5127 for Christina to pick. Happy and work. Full test on the hex head. Copy, candles thanks. are perpendicular to space one. Copy. That looks good. So, Christina, if you confirm that the, um, the empty coupler is, uh, is coupled, now we just need to, you to rotate that knob to lock, to the lock position. 
Stewart. It is in luck. That view from Christina Cook's uh, helmet camera and uh, this one from a uh, camera on the exterior of the space station as she continues working getting working to get the Christina, uh, you can equipment cart uh, into a configuration so that it can be moved following the space walk by by teams here on the ground. What are you working on? I'm trying to put everything back in the crew lock bag, and then I'm going to leave the PGT for you. Copy. And uh, Christina, if you can confirm for us that you're you're working on your green hook, correct? I'm Green hook has been dropped, or retrieved rather, and I am going for the crew off bag. Copy, green hook is retrieved. View of uh, astronaut Nick Haig still at the integrated electronics assembly at the P4 segment of the truss. The crew will be moving to the other side of the assembly to get uh, ready for that uh, pre uh, get ahead work uh, they'll be doing with a, a battery that had a problem and uh, also the battery discharge control unit that uh, controls the charge that goes into that battery. Um, getting those ready for switch out by the space station's robotic arm over the course of the next week. We have a few more questions coming in from social media. The first one from Melissa, who is asking, do all astronauts have an engineering background? And uh, no, they don't. Um, astronauts can have really just about any STEM background um, that, that, you can, that you can think of, including uh, We've had we've had scientists and um, and uh, doctors and veterinarians and mathematicians all uh, all join the astronaut course. So, if you are interested in any STEM subjects, you 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 might be a good candidate. Uh, Takumi is asking for his eight-year-old um, whether astronauts get to take a break to eat or drink during the spacewalk. They have water bags included in their spacesuit, so they are basically able to uh, take a drink through a straw for that. But um, as far as getting a snack during a spacewalk, they don't get to stop for a snack. So they've got uh, six and a half hours of work planned for their spacewalk, and they know during that time they, they won't be able to, to get anything to eat. Plus, there's extra time on both ends when they're in their spacesuits. Uh, so they ha they have to go into a spacewalk day knowing that they'll they'll maybe be missing lunch and uh, I think they would still say that that's that's worth it for the view they get outside and the fun of doing a spacewalk. To the full alpha side for a few steps, and Christine will come back and finish the cleanup on the IEA, which is driving uh, two bolts in slot one and five, and we think that's going to put you guys back in sync, and we'll talk P6 later on. Okay. And Tomas, for accounting purposes, the PGT that was on crew lock bag one had a red small small red small small in series. I have one of those on the outside of crew lock bag one. The other one is remaining with the PGT, so I split that series of reds. 
Okay, Nick, uh, good words. We appreciate your words on that. And uh, Christina, before you cross the Sarge, I'll have to check that your gauntlets are in place. Are in place. Thank you. Another question from social media, and just a reminder, you can submit yours using the hashtag AskNASA. This one from Crazy Kindergarten Teacher uh, asking on behalf of Mrs. Floyd's kindergarten class how long it took to build the space station. Uh, the first piece of the space station was actually launched into space in 1998. So. Uh, from then until the last uh, space shuttle mission, assembly was pretty much ongoing, and we're still adding to the space station and, and putting things into space to keep it uh, maintained. So it took a long time, and that's not even counting the time that uh, it took to build the pieces on Earth before they went to space. So it was uh, quite an undertaking to try and get this built, but it is uh, an exceptional uh, laboratory and a really great place to do research in space. That are, yeah, that, that just uh, right by your knees. Okay, I will get out of your way. And uh, Christina, after that, your steps will be to retrieve that PGT that uh, Nick left for you and install a six inch wobble socket from the socket caddy and crew lock back two that you're carrying with you. Happy. And we're 10 seconds from the LOS. And we're 10 seconds from the LOS. Copy, come on, 10 seconds. Copy. And uh, Nick and Christina, we're back with you. I am uh, directly overhead the BCBU44 Alpha 3. Uh, copy, Nick.